1983, Lancia and Abbas set out to create a rally car that was like no other before it. It would be perhaps the greatest interpretation of the insane Group B rally regulations of the time, and would ultimately be a major factor in the cancellation of the series. This twin-charged, 450 horsepower, four-wheel drive monster was of course the Delta S4, the car that changed rallying forever. It would not only become a legend in its own right, but it would also lead to the development of the Delta Integrale, the most successful rally car of all time. Prior to the 1980s, rally cars were limited to two-wheel drive and manufacturers such as Lancia, Ford and Fiat dominated the sport. That all changed when Audi turned up with their four-wheel drive Quattro at the 1980 Yanar Rally. The Quattro's four-wheel drive system gave it a unique advantage over its competition, and it would go on to take its first win at the Swedish Rally in 1981. The following year, the FIA introduced a new set of regulations known as Group B. These new regulations meant that rally cars could now be built more powerful, sophisticated and faster. With the introduction of Group B regulations, Audi continued to press ahead with the Quattro, while other manufacturers such as Opel, Lancia, Nissan and Toyota entered cars with a more traditional two-wheel drive layout. The Quattro would go on to win the Constructors' title in the hands of Michel Mouton and Hanu Mikola. However, Walter Roll and the Opel would claim the Drivers' title. In 1983, Lancia was ready to unleash their rear-wheel drive O37 for a full season. Both the O37 and Quattro received major updates for the year, and the result of this was one of the most exciting and memorable rally seasons of all time. By the end of the year, Lancia managed to claim the manufacturer's title by two points, while Mikola and the Quattro won the driver's title. Despite the result, Lancia knew they needed a four-wheel drive car of their own. The company turned to a bath to create their next rally car, even though they had no prior experience with four-wheel drive systems. Dubbed the SCI38 project, the car would feature a fully tubular space frame construction and the engine would be mounted in the middle to improve weight distribution. As Group B regulations had increased rallying's popularity immensely, Lancia decided that the new car would be based on the Delta. The Delta was a front-engine, front-wheel drive family car that shared almost nothing in common with the final S4, except for the grille and the front windscreen. To complement the new design, Abarth created a new engine that fixed one of the biggest issues with turbocharging technology, lag. Turbo lag occurs because it takes time for the engine to create enough exhaust pressure to spin the turbo and pump compressed air into the engine. On the O37, Abarth had opted for a supercharger instead of a turbocharger to fix this issue. However, supercharging comes with its own set of problems as it sucks power from the engine especially higher up the rev range. What Abarth did is combine both supercharging and turbocharging into a single system. At low engine speeds, most of the boost was created by the supercharger. In the middle of the rev range, both the supercharger and turbocharger produced around the same amount of boost. And as engine speed increased, the turbo took over and the supercharger was bypassed. This twin-charged system effectively eliminated turbo lag, increased power and gave much better throttle response on tight, twisty rally stages. A prototype version of the engine was finished well before the first rolling chassis of the Delta S4 was complete. To test the engine, Abarth created this, a Frankenstein 037 nicknamed Mazinga that could accommodate the power plant. Lancia claimed that the engine produced 450 horsepower. However, many rally insiders believed that it was actually closer to 550. If this wasn't enough, it was rumoured that Henry Toivonen tested an 800 horsepower version of the S4 at the Estoril circuit in Portugal, lapping within a few seconds of Formula 1 cars from the period. 
While engine performance was important, Abarth also focused on creating a car that was as light as possible. As the Delta S4 was placed in the 2000-2500cc class, it could weigh as little as 890kg. Abarth's engineers went to enormous lengths to keep the Delta's weight as close to this limit as possible. They were one of the first companies in rallying to use computer-aided programs to help work out forces that parts would be subjected to. This meant they could design the car with thinner carbon Kevlar body panels and smaller diameter tubing that saved an enormous amount of weight. Once the chassis and body was finished, Abarth began testing the car with the twin-charged engine in place. During testing, the car was disguised as a military vehicle to fool onlookers and competitors. After a number of revisions, the S4 was ready to rally. Lancia and Abarth managed to get the Delta S4 homologated just in time for the 1985 RAC rally, the last event of the season. To do this, they needed to create 200 road-going versions of the S4. Despite being a completely new car, the Delta managed to achieve an incredible 1-2 finish in the capable hands of Toivonen and Marku Ulen at its first event. For the 1986 season, the Delta would be up against the likes of the Audi Quattro, the Ford RS200 and of course the Peugeot 205 T16, the car that dominated the 1985 season. Lancia Toivonen and the S4 had a strong start to the year winning the Monte Carlo Rally just ahead of the Peugeot. Marco Alen and the S4 would then take second at the Swedish Rally, with Peugeot claiming first. Portugal followed, but after a terrible accident involving a Ford RS200, Lancia decided to withdraw from the event. While the Delta S4 was a formidable contender, it was not without its problems. The car often had to undergo full rebuilds after each rally and drivers complained that the cabin would get extremely hot due to heat radiating from the engine. Additionally, in some cases the throttle pedal could even get stuck on the composite floor, making it impossible to drive. For these reasons, Lancia brought back the 037 for the demanding and difficult Safari Rally. The Delta returned for the Tour de Course in May, with a number of improvements. Lancia and Abarth put the S4 on an extreme diet removing as much weight as possible to improve performance. The start of the rally went well for Lancia. Toivonen was crushing the field despite suffering from the flu, and the Delta was working well. However, things would soon turn disastrous when Toivonen and co-driver Sergio Cresto plunged off the side of the road on the 18th stage. The car exploded within seconds of the crash, and both occupants were killed instantly. The fire from the explosion was so intense that the Delta S4 was unrecognisable as a car following the event. How and why the Delta S4 left the road is still a mystery, but it is known that the explosion was caused by tree branches puncturing the thin aluminium fuel tank. Lancia had removed the skid plates to reduce weight, leaving the fuel tank more exposed to outside elements. Before the accident, Toivonen had complained that the car was too fast and powerful for a rally like the Tour de Course. He said, Today we have driven more than the whole distance of the Thousand Lakes Rally. After four hours of driving, it's hard to keep up with the speed. So, with a modern car like this, it's just impossible to race here. It's physically exhausting and our brains can't keep up with it anymore. This terrible accident led to an immediate freeze on the development of Group B rally cars, and the disbandment of the series at the end of the 1986 season. Despite the loss of Toivonen and Cresto, Lancia pressed ahead with the 1986 season. The car would claim second at the Acropolis rally and then second and third in New Zealand. The next win came in Argentina, with Mickey Biasion taking first and Aline claiming second. Peugeot would strike back at the Thousand Lakes Rally in Finland, claiming first and second, while Lancia and Alain would have to settle for third. The San Remo Rally in October would prove to be the most controversial event of the season. Organisers disqualified the entire Peugeot team for running illegal side skirts, which meant Lancia claimed first, second and third. The RAC Rally was up next, with Peugeot taking first and third, 
while the S4 had to settle for second. Lancia hit back at the last event of the season, the Olympus Rally, where they claimed first ahead of the 205 and the Quattro, giving Alain the driver's title. However, celebrations would be short-lived when Peugeot appealed the decision to be excluded from the San Remo Rally. The FIA would declare Peugeot's cars legal, and all points for the Italian event were cancelled. This would hand Peugeot the constructor's title, and Juha Kankinen would take the driver's title. With the conclusion of the 1986 season, the Delta S4's WRC career was over. A small consolation for Lancia came when the S4 won both the European and Italian Rally Championships, but the disappointment was still deep. While Lancia lost out on the 1986 season, the S4 led to the development of the Group A Delta Integrale. The Integrale would go on to become the most successful rally car of all time, solidifying the fact that Lancia is one of the greatest rally car manufacturers ever. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe and check out garagedreams.net. Also let us know what iconic cars you would like to see in future videos in the comments below. Thanks for watching, see you next time.